Silver clay is always in its very best state when it's first removed from a brand new packet. It can of course be re-rolled and moulded and stored and used. But even PMC Flex, which is designed to retain water, is still not a fan of being handled too much and it is prone to drying out if you're going to leave it out into the open air. So you should get all of your tools ready and assembled all around you before you even think about opening this packet of clay. You should have a small Teflon sheet or another similar non-stick work surface. You should have your spacers. I use two one millimeter plastic spacers on each side of my Teflon sheet, which means I can roll out my piece of silver clay completely flat to a depth of two millimeters all over. But you can easily use two stacks of regular playing cards. Just pile up a few playing cards to approximately two millimeters in height. You don't need to be 100% precise, but remember that your fingerprint will dip into the surface of your clay and it will also dip into the surface of your necklace. You need to make sure it's thick enough so that the fingerprint doesn't poke out the back. If it's too thin, you could end up pressing your fingerprint all the way through to the other side of your clay, but even if that doesn't happen, you could end up distorting the back of your necklace so it's not nice and flat like this one. It's not just that this doesn't look great, it means that your fingerprint necklace could end up being quite thin and fragile in the area of the fingerprint. It definitely doesn't always pay to try and save money by skimping on clay. You should have your small acrylic roller or a piece of smooth acrylic plumber's pipe to roll out your silver clay with. You need to have some badger balm or some olive oil so that you can lubricate your hands and anything else you might need to lubricate to stop the clay from sticking to it, like your acrylic roller. And you need to have the three-dimensional fingerprint that you moulded earlier from your original mould. You need to have your shape cutter. Now I'm using a metal heart-shaped sugar paste cutter that has nice crisp edges and no visible join anywhere. It's worthwhile investing in a good quality cutter or a set of good cutters because very cheap cutters often have a very visible join in the metal that's going to show up terribly in the clay. It'll leave you with a really horrible ridge on one side of your fingerprint necklace and although it's possible to tidy that up by sanding it in the next stage of making, it's a total waste of your time, it's a waste of your clay and the edge of your necklace will never look 100% right. You also need a damp piece of kitchen tissue, not wet. This just needs to be damp enough so that if you give it a good squeeze, you shouldn't be able to squeeze any water out of it, but it should feel damp all over. And you will need a small plastic bag like this one or a piece of cling film. These are both used to wrap up any leftover silver clay once you've made your necklace. We press the cutter down into the clay and there will be excess clay around the edge of the cutter. You need to collect this all up very quickly you first need to wrap it up in the damp tissue. Then you need to wrap that up inside the plastic bag or the cling film. You need to make sure you've removed all of the air and then you need to place the whole lot back into the original clay packet to stop it drying out. Your silver clay can be kept for a month or more like that, but you do need to keep an eye on it because it can still dry out. If you don't keep an eye on it, you might come back to find a little solid silver clay rock. You will also need either a silver clay needle tool or just a large needle. Now we use this to make a small hole on the opposite side of your necklace to the fingerprint. And through this hole, we thread a little silver ring and we use that ring to hang your necklace from a chain. We use the needle to make the initial hole, but this won't be quite big enough. So once we've made that hole, we use a small 1.5 millimeter drill bit. We go through the first hole, twisting, to make the hole a little bit bigger. And then we take a two millimeter drill bit and we go through the same hole, twisting as we go down and on our way back out again to make the hole bigger again. Now you will probably think that makes the hole look rather big, but when silver clay is fired, it shrinks by approximately 12% and that little hole will shrink too. So the hole in your finished necklace won't look quite as big as the hole you make in your clay.